Welcome back to our video module on quantum mechanics where we're covering the ARI function patch for the WKB approximation. While in our previous video we looked at which forms of the ARI function and the ARI function's asymptotic forms are best suited for this point around the A. Today I'd like to take a more general approach so we can understand more clearly how to use the ARI function. In order to understand it, I'd like to revisit our exponential function. In this case, I've drawn e to the negative kx, and one might reasonably ask, is this function increasing or decreasing? The logical response is that it's decreasing, because usually we look from the left to the right. However, if you're moving along the curve from the right to the left, you're going to see it increasing. And of course, we've played with these types of questions since high school algebra. It's just a question of defining which way your coordinate system is set up. Now I'm going to take the same logic and extend it to our ARI function. So with a little bit of algebraic trickery, we see that the ARI function is really close to four different graphs. Graph one is what we traditionally looked at where we have some sort of exponential decay going from left to right. Graph two is where we saw an exponential increase going from left to right. Also, please note, as I noted previously, that this area for A and for B look very similar, but they are not the same. There is a phase factor involved there. Now from graph three, we've taken graph one up here and we've flipped it across the y-axis. Likewise, graph four, we flipped graph two along the y-axis. Something worth noting here is that the ARI function we note as AI exponentially decreases to a definite value of zero. And if you go backwards, which is what we're looking at here, it exponentially increases to a definite value. Conversely, the B ARI function increases to an infinite value or it comes down and it decreases to a positive value. Now, how is that useful? Let's get rid of our exponential graph and let's draw the wave equation in the region of A. Going from left to right, we see that E is greater than V, but decreasing. So we'll have some sort of sinusoidal function with increasing amplitude and frequency. And then once we hit A where E equals V, we're going to see that wave function change to a exponentially decreasing function or at least something that looks like it. Well, we've already seen that that looks most like the ARI function number one. And in fact, in our last video, we wrote down the equation for this graph as we get far away from the origin. When we're near the origin in this area, the wave function just acts as a simple ARI function. Well, what happens if now instead of looking at A, we look at B? I've written down what the potential profile looks like near the region where E equals V. And now I'd like to draw the wave equation. Going once again from the left to the right, we know that we're going to be coming down in amplitude as the wave function experiences tunneling. And it's going to be exponential because E is less than V. So our wave function might look like this, an exponential decline to a definite amount once E equals V we have a sinusoidal function to the right. Now to identify which form of the ARI function we're going to look at, we simply look to the right at our list of four, and the one it looks most like is right here, which is a BI ARI function, which we're used to thinking of as exponentially increasing, and that's kind of what happens here if you're going from the right to the left. Likewise, anytime we're doing the patch for the WKB approximation, we're looking at which ARI function is most appropriate. This will allow us to know how to best patch with either a sinusoidal or an exponential function. And for future reference, I'll write down the asymptotic forms of the ARI functions for both AI and BI on the sinusoidal and exponential regions. That concludes our brief exploration of the ARI patch for the WKB approximation. Join us next time as we learn how to actually use this to identify energies for wave functions with innovative potential profiles. I look forward to seeing you then.